Hello, my dear gardeners. Well, the sun is out and my beautiful Azalea is opening her wonderful blooms here. Isn't she pretty here? This is just on the one shrub and she's a wonderful corner here blowing in some shade. But the front of my house right now is being totally dominated by blooms of creeping phlox. And I do have creeping phlox uh, in two different colors. I have it in uh, uh, lavender, uh, gentle lavender color and I have it in pink magenta color. So let's go and enjoy those blooms in the front and let's do the tour in May 2023 of my front garden. Also we will check how my roses are doing in the front, particularly roll doll roses. <laughs> The front of our house has a very interesting particular feature. Several years ago, my oldest son wanted to do vegetables and I was very happy to oblige. So we didn't have space to build raised beds in the back and I built them in the front. Talking about curb appeal, you know. So that year, after we completed these raised beds, our house received the award, the Towner Award, for best creative landscape, believe it or not. And maybe, you know what, it was also because I painted flowers on my garden, uh, on my house. So maybe that was also partially because of that. So here, in those, in these two raised beds, in the front here, we have sage and uh, thyme almost colonizing all the area, you know. And I wish my family will use a little bit more of sage because look how happy he is here. Um, I don't know, we just never use a lot of sage uh, during summer cooking. And probably we will be trimming this guy to make more space for tomatoes. But it was so cold recently. Today I believe is the first beautiful day that I didn't put my tomatoes out. My second uh, bed is almost empty. I built this support with tw from twigs and um, my peas already sprouted out there and they are actively growing now when the sun is there. But right here near the beds last year I planted these two uh, little shrubs and you know what they are? They are black currant shrub and red currant shrub. I grew up in the beautiful vegetable garden in Ukraine and my parents had a lot of um, berry bushes. Let me tell you, my granny probably had 20 red currant bushes and just the berries and black currants. So in memory of that, and my kids were asking always to plant something they can eat, I planted these bushes and they were introduced last year they were very miserable. We had really dry here last year and I really worried that these guys are not going to survive. But look at this little thing, you see? I'm not sure how we are going to share berries with birds if I need to cage um, and protect these uh, shrubs, but we will see. So this one is the black currant and another one is red currant. And red currant has different um, uh, fruiting uh, strengths. They're bigger, longer, and hopefully birds are not going to be eating them. They probably will think that they're poisonous, but we will see. This is my first year growing black currants and red currants in US. All right, here are my peas showing up finally it took them forever in this cold weather so I have one two three four five six seven uh, pea plants and hopefully they will colonize this um, somewhat very interesting structure very soon now the most interesting performance right now is from my creeping flocks and this area, you see the area between the street and sidewalk, was totally developed by us. 
many years ago and um, we planted all sorts of perennials there and the one which is magnificent right now is creeping phlox. Let me go to another side and I will show you. Just look at these cheerful flowers. They do come in, uh, I believe, three different colors, in lavender, pink and white. And they are excellent, just excellent ground covers, delighting us with blooms. They sell really quickly um, at the garden centers. And look how cheerful they are. They're almost at their end of blooming. And I really wanted to show you how wonderful they are. But it was raining almost for the whole week here. You see how they cascade and they just fall on the street. So probably a great idea would be to showcase them on some wall. Meanwhile, just look at my hydrangeas. This area is very tough for hydrangeas. And you know, last year I was thinking about it that at some point my hydrangeas are going to have a hard time. And we have two different hydrangeas here. Smooth leaf hydrangea, which is this one, which is leafing out right now. And this one is mop head hydrangea. We have four or five of them here. And last year we had such a tough dry year. And look at all these buds. I don't think they are living. See, all of them are dead. Look at this. It's just a dead bud. So I was really desperately waiting for some sign of life showing up. No, looks like only some of them are uh, budding out. Like here, you see this one. But that's not a lot, and I don't want to keep them just three sticks sticking out, leafing out, and the rest of the plant is kind of misshaped. So what I'm going to do this year, unfortunately, we are not going to have any beautiful hydrangeas blooming. Uh, I will have to take those down and those leaves there for next year. This is our uh, smooth leaf hydrangea, a nice pink one. It's blooming on new wood so I give it a nice shapey uh, trim and she's leafing out very well. Oh these guys the yellow ones basket of gold. I planted them oh my gosh when we just moved into the house many years ago and look how cheerful they are. They nothing literally bothers them they're disease-free. If you put the seeds into the soil that year, basket of gold will not produce any blooms. But next year, they will be happy to bloom. Believe it or not, they thrive in uh, inhospitable dry soil. And that's what exactly it is on this stretch of land. As you can see, the same is happening with this hydrangea and with this hydrangea. This hydrangea actually doesn't even have any buds on it. Uh, everything is just frozen and falling off. So it's okay. I will make sure that I um, feed them very well and stay on top of watering because our hungry, hungry maple trees are taking all the nutrients and water out of this side uh, um, flower bed. So what's happening near the door of our house? Let's look here. Those funny little sticks coming out of our yew shrubs here. Well, there are two of them, well actually three of them growing in the front and I'm trying to create a little topiary right here, like a ball on top and it's taking, uh, this is their second year and I realize it's going to be forever for them to start forming into the ball. Uh, it's happening not as fast. So this is one. But imagine there would be a nice sizable um, ball on top. That will look pretty good. One on this side and one on this side. All right. Now, I, I'm in the process of uh, putting mulch into this front flower bed. And let's see what's going on here. Well, uh, my um, boxwoods are doing very well. They're maturing well. Some of them didn't survive 
Here we have hydrangeas, smooth hydrangeas and um, boxwoods. Just couldn't face all that pressure of leaves of hydrangeas. So they died. I believe I lost three shrubs. And you know what? I'm not going to push them there because these beautiful hydrangeas, they're going to become bigger and bigger here. And they love it here despite the morning shade. Meanwhile, my roses suffer a bit. They are queen of Sweden roses. And hopefully this year we will have some great performance. Also at the back, you see the climber right here. That is uh, Eden rose. A climber and I'm still thinking what I'm going to do to build some sort of a support right here for that climber. This site is also recently developed. Again, hydrangea dead. Only new shoots are coming and they are since they're new hydrangea is not going to bloom this year. And here this area is dedicated to roses. Let's go and see what's happening here. The pink creeping phlox, as you can see, is different, a little bit darker in shade. And here their biggest area is dedicated to roll dal roses. They were planted here, five of them, last year, last spring. As you can see, I'm protecting them from rabbits. And they did sustain a lot of winter damage and I talked to other rosarians and they also report that Roald Dahl is somewhat sensitive to winter. Although I believe it's hardy to zone five. I have to double check. So my report is Roald Dahl didn't do well in winter. Well, it's very exposed location here. We do have wind going up and down the street. So I had to do a lot of um, cutting. A lot of stems were had damage. So what I did this year, I fertilized them well. I put a layer of uh, uh, decomposed cow manure and hopefully this year I will stay on top of watering. Plus we trimmed our maple trees which were creating a lot of shade here. And hopefully this year we will have some strong growth from these five shrubs here. Meanwhile, on the fence here between me and my neighbor, we do have my climbing rose. And she's doing very well. She's very happy here. She's a big rose. That's a generous gardener. And if you train those stiff canes early enough, they will go on a lower fence. Here we have Desdemona. Also very strong grower. I like how she's doing here. We have here, we have such a strong rabbit pressure that I'm protecting Desdemona from rabbits. I know it doesn't really look very well. What can you do? But my Desdemona is pushing new shoots and growing well. Oh, I see aphids. Oh, the first infestation. Look at this. Just look at this. Oh, I'm going to get you guys. A quick spray of neem oil will take care of them. All right, that's the first one for me. Welcome to the season. You know what I just noticed? Look at this. My climbing rose. And I don't know what happened here. When you look closely on this stem right here, you see there is some sort of, there was some sort of a strong damage on this cane. And that's a new beautiful cane here. And I just noticed it this week. So look, that's a very strong cane going all the way here. And look, it's starting dying off. When you look to the tips, look at them. You see the edge of the stem starting not to get enough nutrients and the leaves are very small, chlorotic. Mm, all right, looks like I might be losing this stem altogether. But it's okay, I have a lot of growth on these top stems. 
at the end of my property, I planted the other day Six Hills giant Nepeta. And let's check how she's doing. Oh, she is growing very well here. You wouldn't even notice that she was being re she was replanted. Great, right? So we have two different Nepetas. Um, Walker's Low and Six Hill Giant. Six Hill Giant will probably will overtake all this space. And she has space here, literally. She can spread around. Just look at this pretty flower bed. It's so different from just having the grass here between the sidewalk and the street. I'm very happy we developed it. Oh, look at my peonies. Ready to bloom soon. All right, that's the end of our tour. Look what I got just coming from the store. Uh, it's double play artisan spirea. I'm going to plant it and I bought two of them, but that would be for another day. I hope you're going to have a lovely day. Happy gardening and we will see you in our next video.